Hello everyone and welcome to another Scratch tutorial. In this video we will be looking at metadata, custom metadata and how to use that metadata in burn-ins and output file naming. So it's quite a lot to cover but this will be quick. So in here I have three shots. The first one is a red raw shot and if I select that and swipe up the metadata stack I can see this clip ships with quite a whole lot of metadata as you can see and even more so um, as you can see there are sort of two sections here in the metadata stack and this is quite important to understand um, the upper half here is uh, what we call generic metadata this is basically what every clip has every clip has a projection type a duration time code whether it's a circle take or not scene take information all these kinds of things and then there is what we call custom metadata uh, which is dependent on the clip itself, whatever the clip ships, like uh, a red raw clip ships, different metadata than an array raw clip and so on. Or it can be uh, user-defined metadata. So in here we now see all the very red raw specific metadata that the underlying source clip ships. And of course we can use all that metadata um, in our workflow. All right, so how to do that? Well, let's go to the render tab and add a burn-in node to our output tree and double click that to enter color fix with that node. Okay, now we have uh, our text box here and we can type something in, uh, my fine dailies for instance. And as you can see, that shows up here in the upper left corner right away. However, that's not what we're here for. We want to burn in metadata. So let's say uh, the file name, okay? And to add the file name, we have a bunch of uh, tokens here. So uh, where do we go? Source name, we will add that. And this adds hashtag S name in here, All right? We can also display the time code like that, insert metadata and choose time code. Here we go. If we now hit play, the timecode runs. File name stays the same. Okay, so this uh, this works uh, pretty solidly. However, what we can also do is create a new text box. Let me flip that back up again. Okay, make the text right aligned and do uh, hashtag take for instance to display the current take number or even more so let's uh, put uh, hashtag scene in front of it and take into the second line here. Okay, if we go to the metadata stack, scene 12a take three matches 100%. Maybe let's put scene in front of it and take in front of here. All right, so this works uh, really well. But as I said, there is not only this kind of generic metadata, which every clip has or should have, ideally. Um, there's also a whole bunch of custom metadata, like the stuff down here. So let's say we want uh, the lens name uh, in here as a burn-in, which might be really helpful, right? So let's create a new text box, make this left aligned again, and bring it down uh, somewhere here, okay? and put in hashtag lens underscore name. Well, that does not seem to work, right? This is not what we intended. Well, for custom metadata columns, uh, you have to work a little bit different. First, what you do is tell Scratch, hey, I want to display a custom metadata column, which you can do by using hashtag MD, just that. Now, as you can see, that's still not enough. Um, you still need to specify to Scratch, hey, uh, which custom metadata column do you want to display here? And the name of that column, lens underscore name, you put into square brackets. So let me add a bracket here and a bracket at the end. And there we go. Maybe let's put lens in front of it. And now we have the lens information here in our burn-in. Pretty cool. And this way, we can do uh, with literally any metadata item that we can see here uh, in our metadata stack, including 
my own metadata, which I created by just hitting the add button here in the metadata stack, or alternatively for uh, multiple clips at once, you can do that in the media browser metadata tab and create your column here and fill it with whatever uh, metadata you want. Okay, but that's not all of it. There is also frame-based metadata. For instance, with this Airy Raw Clip. Now, for frame-based metadata to work, let me quickly close the project, go to System Settings, and here in the Advanced tab, search for well, just metadata and find the Read Per Frame Metadata item in here. Enable that and hit OK. It's disabled by default because not everybody needs frame-based metadata in his workflow, um, and it has a very small but still considerable uh, impact on performance. So once this is enabled, then we can look here at the uh, at this array raw shot, and we can see there is a shift in focus from the flower in the background to the flower in the foreground, somewhere about here. There we go. Okay, and if we scroll down in our metadata stack, we can find the lens focus distance. And as we scrub through, we can see this change. So this is also very good information to display. So back to our render tab, double click the burn in node. And as we can see, uh, this shot has a slightly different format. So we will need to add ladder boxes on our own. I'll just use these ones, add blanking, disable action and title save. Now we have letter boxes and can read our text again. That's good. Move that up here. And uh, in this case, I mean, usually you're only dealing with one kind of footage per timeline, right? You're not mixing it. Obviously the, the Ari Rasha that we're now looking at does not have the lens underscore name metadata item. That's why it's called custom metadata. It differs. Uh, on a per shot basis. So instead of lens, uh, this is uh, focus. And instead of lens underscore name, we want to display, uh, what was it again? Metadata, lens focus distance. Okay. So lens, capital L, lens focus distance. Focus, please. Here we go. All right, and as we scrub through the shot, we can see that number change. This is not only great for uh, having in our burn-in, but it's also pretty great to forward all this metadata to OpenEXR renders for the VFX department. Because any compositor can link this dynamic metadata that we render into the OpenEXR files uh, to his virtual camera inside his compositor. And then have it behave the exact same way as the physical camera on set behaved, which is pretty cool and makes work much, much easier. Okay, now let's assume we love our configuration here and want to save it. Then we can just, uh, making sure that we're in the burn-in menu here, hit the save button and save out uh, a simple .pls file, which is Scratch's own format for a plugin preset. And then we can reuse that uh, on other machines, on other occasions, and so on. Even more so, we can just select the burn-in plugin and save that as a template here. Burn-in, save that. If we now go to a different timeline, let me quickly clean that up here. Uh, we can apply our burn-in here. And if we decide to add more output nodes like a ProRes encoder or uh, DNX encoder, etc. If we select the uh, leftmost node, which is the main output node, our timeline, then we can also save the whole tree. If we now go to a different timeline, recall our dailies template with the burn in and our ProRes and our DNX encoder, and so on. Now, that being said, um, there is not only metadata in those raw files like Red Raw, Array Raw, Sony Raw, what have you raw. Uh, there is also a lot of metadata in simple QuickTime files, for instance, from an Array Alexa, which I have here. As you can see, that is a .mov ProRes file. And if I display the metadata stack for this file, 
you will find that there is a whole bunch of metadata included in here too. And all this metadata will be forwarded to whatever we are rendering out of Scratch. And it will of course also show up in our reports. So when we create a report that is not just Clip Basics, but a Clip Metadata report, we can even choose which metadata columns we want to have show up in our report. Now for file naming, uh, for file naming metadata is equally important. So let's add, well, let's just add a progress encoder in here and click right in here into the file name. As you can see, right now we're rendering one big file called timeline one burn in progress encoder.mov. That's usually not what we want in dailies. So let's click in here and make S name out of just hashtag name. And now we're rendering uh, using the source name of each clip. And since the source name of each clip, well, changes from clip to clip, uh, this way the output file name uh, will change from clip to clip and hence for Scratch to render separate uh, individual source files again. But not only that, we can also combine all that if we want to with hashtag date underscore for instance, or not make an underscore, but rather make a slash. So now Scratch will create a folder based on the current date and render and render in the files based on their source name. And of course, I can also just type in something myself like editorial slash and Scratch will create this whole folder structure. As you can see, we also have a shortcut here with all our uh, normal hash codes to use for metadata and, and file naming. And if you ever are wondering how a certain hash code is used, then you can just select it here and you will find an explanation on how to use it and what it does down here. Okay, that's it for uh, metadata in Scratch, frame-based metadata, how to use it in a burn-in plugin and how to use it for output file naming and reporting. I hope this was useful to you and see you next time. Bye.